Hey, Cher, I found someone. That was Michael Bolton. He wrote that, didn't he? Yeah. And how come and you... He and wanted, he had wanted to do it on his own album, his first album, but uh, his record company didn't like it, oh. which was really silly. So he, he came to produce it. And I remember it was really strange because the more I did it, the more angry he got because he kept thinking, I, he kept saying, I don't understand why my record company won't let me do this. It's such a yeah. great song. Well, so, well, I'm glad you did it. I am too. <laughs> Tell me, 14th and 15th of May, uh, you're back here in the Midlands for two massive gigs but this is so exciting I can't wait you arrive on stage on a chandelier you sing a disco version of U2's I still haven't found what I'm looking for we've got the videos of your past the dances the acrobatics and of course the outrageous uh, costume changes now tell me oh sorry about the changes I'm, I'm just wearing a pair of jeans and a t-shirt hey listen that is not true <laughs> No, of course not. That is not true. Ta I'd rather stick needles in my eyes than do a show like that. I, I heard that you're really boring when you're when you're not on stage. That you're you, you, no. live, a, you live a quiet life. That, that you, oh no, I do. Yes, I do live a quiet life. But as a person, I'm absolutely not boring. I'm fantastic and hysterical. <laughs> <laughs> what what do you do when you're not on stage? Well, I you, go to the movies. I yeah. hang with my friends. I go down to Florida sometimes. Jet mm -hmm. ski. Uh, I don't know. I just mostly hang with my friends. I hang with my kids. I see my grandmother, I see my mom, I I look at cars, yeah. I ride my motorcycle, uh -huh. um, just stuff. Tell, tell me, what, what's the best thing about Cher live in concert? The whole show together makes like, a, it's like going to a circus. Mm -hmm. It's like a circus with music and that's the best thing about it. You could be kind of any age and still have a good time. Yeah. I mean, unless you just hate me, then you don't. Then don't come. Well, just go do something else. What, what do you like best about the touring? I only like the show best, to tell you the truth, because I mean, I just have finished doing 200 shows, 202 shows in America, and it was it's difficult going to a different place every night, going to a different bed every night, mm -hmm. and so the traveling is the part I don't like. Yeah. The show is the part I like. Is it, is it true that before you go on stage, you know, you, you do this vocal warm-up and you have that private group prayer? I'm yeah. Ju I'm just trying, to, just trying to build a picture for anyone who's going to, to the Cher concert, right? And it's always, you know, if you've ever been to a concert, you're wondering, what is the star doing beforehand? So, so what's your little routine, say, a minute before you go on stage? What are you thinking? Well, when I... When I I arrive late always because I don't like too much time. Uh, if I have too much time, it makes me nervous. So I uh -huh. get there exactly at the moment that I have to get there. I do my vocalizing, and um, which is the same vocal tape that I had from the Believe Tour. So the dates are all wrong. <laughs> um, my 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 vocal coach. This is the last. May of 19, you know, whenever Believe came out. Yeah. 1912, <laughs> I don't remember. But, and then I go out and all the kids are around and we just do this, you know, we do this kind of group, you know, football kind of deal, prayer, because we're all going out there together. It's kind of like a team of us and we have to be kind of pumped up and feel good and get energy from someplace. So we just all like hold hands and then I kind of lead us, and it's very, I mean, sometimes it's really hysterical, and sometimes, you know, yeah. sometimes it's dumb, and sometimes it's good, and sometimes it's, you know, whatever. And then we just all scream amen, and then we walk out on the stage, and then I go into my offstage, you know, little quick change room, and mm -hmm. then I get into my harness, and then I go. You seem to be the only one that comes to my mind that's accepted as both singer and actress. Not an actress who became a singer, or a singer who became an actress. Like, you, no. must, be, you must be very proud of that, to, you know, that well, you, can, you can put each career into its box, and... No, I'm, I am happy, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I, I like doing both of them, you know, and I mean, look, I start, I mean, I started with Sonny, we were singers, then we went on TV and we had a really successful program in America, Yeah. and then we got a divorce, and then I went on and I had a successful program, and then we went back together, Yeah. and then I, we left, and then I did movies, and you know, it was just things to do, I just think that all art, no matter what you do, is like when I put my makeup on, while I'm doing it, you know, getting like my quiet space before I go into the show, yeah. I sit there, and I'm painting like a, I'm painting this canvas so everything I do I think of as art because I don't know if you're an artistic person you just try everything and what's the worst ha that can happen you fail and I've failed miserably and had people go oh she's she's so over and then things happen what what, what drives you on I'm interested mm -hmm. I think I, that's what it is I'm just interested you should have got an Oscar for mask you didn't you turned up at the Oscars and you were wearing that. Is, is the guy called Bob Mackie? Is that the guy who does who does your clothes? Yeah, yeah, uh-huh. Yeah, that was just totally outrageous. That was like saying, well, you haven't given it to me, but to hell with you. And of course, you, you won an Oscar two years later. But it, right. No, I was just really angry because they said that they didn't... The, I wasn't a serious actress because I didn't dress like a serious actress and my boyfriends were too young. And so I showed up in that outfit and I thought, you know what? <sighs> 
up. Yeah, but, exactly. And, but then, you know what the truth was? I was really angry. But then once I got there and everybody, I mean, like all my, like Jane Fonda came around the corner and she looked at me and she was laughing hysterically. And then I started, had such a great time. I forgot that I was in a ridiculous outfit and that I'd been angry. <laughs> so it just, I had a, I had actually a blast. It was so much fun that year. Well, what advice would you give to a, a Britney or a Christina? You know, these divas in training, you know, if, if they were to say, you know, share, because you've been around for four decades. So. For, for, for these stars who've been going for the last four or five years with regards to longevity keeping your sanity keeping your career going what advice would you give to them you better have a good sense of humor so are you talking about for example if you read those horrible reports in the papers or if a record company says oh no you're not you know, yeah. yeah if you don't you know if you if you don't believe in yourself or if you have a like I mean I've had lots of times where I thought oh it's over for me mm -hmm. but then I just go do something else I mean a lot of times failure is so underrated it's great for you for who you are you know it helps build a lot of character so and sometimes you need it because also when you get to be famous young you just think you are the hottest thing in the world and think it's going to go on forever yeah and it doesn't well i mean in my case it does but usually it doesn't <laughs> I, my mom told me that I used to run around when I was three years old naked singing. And so I said, well, mom, what? nothing's changed. <laughs> well, uh, no, I'm actually, I'm wear a little bit more than like in the 90s where yeah. I hardly wore anything, like just dental floss. Yeah. Tell me, you uh, dated Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi, Gene Simmons from yeah. Kiss and Val Kilmer. Right. I hear there's a man in your life by the name of Mr. Big. <laughs> Tell, oh, I didn't want to talk about him. Tell me, how, oh, how, how did you how did you two meet? Uh, well, during the Believe tour, someone threw Mr. Big under a truck. Never one of, under one of our one of uh, one of our trucks. You know the stuff that we haul all of our all of our stuff in. Yeah, and so. We took him to the hospital because he was very sick and he was only three weeks old and he mm -hmm. had a big puncture in his neck. And oh. then we happened to be there for two days, which we are almost never playing the same venue twice. Mm -hmm. And then we got him back from the doctor and everyone said, what will we do with him? And I said, I'm taking him. And everybody said, no, 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 no. And I went, oh, yes, 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 yes. And so I took him and now he's, he's older and he's more handsome. And we do have to say that Mr. Big is a cat. Yes. Not the and guy. I named, him, I named him Mr. Big because I was crazy about Sex in the City, and so I named him Mr. Big after the guy. Guy in Chris Sex North. in the City. That's his name. Chris North, is that the name? Well, I mean, yeah, I thought he was great. It was the first season, I think, and, and I thought he was hysterical. He was so cool, wasn't he? Because he Very cool. Uh, Carrie and himself would arrange to meet up. Um, they'd they get whatever the timing wrong, and he'd arrive and say, well, yeah, I said I'd be here for an hour. I'll wait outside for 40 minutes. Now you've got 20. And that's, he, was, he was really rude, wasn't he? No, he was. He was good. Women like that, do they? Okay. Yeah. Well, nobody sure. wants to push. Somebody never wants to push someone around. Yeah. Okay. Well, sure. I'm taking no more grief from you. Just shut up and listen to what I've got to say. Uh, okay. <laughs> 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 okay. Fine.